I even went to the length of putting the uh, skins in our factor to get certain shots because the cameras in breaks some rubbish. Fair enough. <laughs> Seconds. Be okay. Good evening, welcome to the fourth round of the American Touring Car Championship Season 4 and we're at KW Super Speedway for the traditional um, oval race in this championship. I'm joined tonight by Mr. Toby Davis. Hello Mr. Ryan Callan and we're both looking forward to this one I think. It's going to be a different challenge for the drivers racing at ovals for the first time in the season but not for the first time in the ATCC. This is a, a traditional venue for the drivers and uh, we can see in the point standings it's very close at the top. It is indeed extremely close. Jesper Tolborg was awarded the win at uh, Nürburgring GP in the first race. So Stoffel van Dorn's um, clean sweep of uh, the two wins, two fastest laps and pole position was unfortunately cancelled out after he was judged to have um, broken the track boundaries a few too many times for the track marshal's um, likings. And Tolborg was awarded the win with, with Van Dorn promoted to second. So that meant Tolborg is on top of the standings, 262, just one point between him and one of his nemesis in VR, and of course his teammate and great rival and friend of course, Keith Barrick and Miguel Nato is right there after a very strong Nürburgring GP, Toby. He is, and you can see in the, the top four it's really a four horse chase for the title, and uh, obviously we're, we're not that far, I mean there's still plenty of time left in the season, but you've got to say that the top four have uh, gapped the rest of the field. Nato a little bit behind the others, but Barrick and Talwalk will be working together on Via and NATO at uh, KW Speedway. It's uh, interesting that you need a draft partner um, to get the maximum out of the cars. They're all using BMWs this time round as well, aren't they, Ryan? They are indeed, and of course, just on that draft partner um, um, sub uh, subject, as you mentioned, um, Van Dorn and both you, Van Dorn and Braham are missing their actual teammates in this event. So they look like they're going to be teaming up themselves in this event so we'll see how that works out that should be interesting to watch yeah it, it depends whether they've teamed up with other people I think uh, Yuri Braham is obviously he's missing a teammate um, and he uh, he might team up with uh, one with one of the other t one of the others that are missing drivers um, but uh, so you can see he's dr dropping down the order he's still in fifth place though um, sort of flying the flag for uh, FDD um, but obviously FDR can then and Team Portugal won the uh, class of the team's championships. Um, those are the top four in the championship as well, exactly. so it's very much a two-horse race here at the moment, you know, unless um, Kaido or Amaral can produce something here today. But of course, um, not forgetting uh, Stoffel van Dorn, if he produces in the kind of form he show showed at Nürburgring GP, there is no reason why he cannot be a factor in this championship because 
of course we do have two drop scores in the season to come also so he will he will be able to drop those scores that he um, unfortunately lost at Road America those two um, non, non-starts I guess you could say because of the, the drop in warm so he's not out of the championship just yet and it will be very interesting to see how he goes here today also as well he's a KW Speedway rookie whereas you've got the veterans of Barrick Torborg and Braham of course NATO and Vihar competed here last season so looking forward to see how those drivers do and we're seeing some phenomenal lap times compared to last season last season 45-4 was the best I think anybody could do and now everybody and all the top four drivers are above that Barrick and Torborg say they've unlocked some secret in the setup but it seems that NATO and Vihar have done the same thing Toby I think, uh, quite frankly, the cars, we are using different cars compared to last season, so I think maybe the uh, the cars are a little bit better. Obviously, it could be that people have found new tactics, but the track itself hasn't changed. It's only the cars, mm-hmm. and uh, I think people have uh, people have got used to uh, the new uh, the new cars that we're using this season a little bit better, perhaps, and uh, obviously they're maximising that. And it's only, as you say, it's only a couple of tenths, um, but that can make all the difference. And, uh, I mean, round, round such a short track as well. Absolutely. It's only 45 seconds for a lap. Um, Keith was telling me earlier that it's uh, you can do a 45 flat if you're if you're being pushed by a partner. Uh, you can do a 45 seven if you're in a gaggle of cars of about six or seven. Mm-hmm. But by yourself, you're looking at, at high 45s in qualifying and uh, low 46s just by yourself in the race. So you've got to have that draft partner. And of course, you can't have a draft in the qualifying because it's super pole. So you do have to um, be able to go quickly by yourself also as well. Francisco Villar, Keith Barrick in third, Tall Walking in fourth. So we've got the top four in the championship, top four positions. In fact, we've got the top six drivers in the championship. Um, you could say there were the top six um, drivers in the top three teams, if that makes any sense. Um, Team Portugal uh, two there, Rafa Morales and Kaido in fifth and sixth. And Yuri Braham is a former winner at this particular circuit, so we'll look out for him. Hopefully he can um, team up with Stoffel van Gaal and they can make a charge towards the front of the field. And we have just reset um, practice here very recently, so the lap times are a little bit lower than you would expect. Some people not able to get in drafting runs in just yet, and we are going to go into practice in about end to qualifying. So in about two minutes time, um, who's your favourite for this race, um, Toby? Anybody stand out for you? Um, I've been watching Bia and uh, Bia and NATO in practice a little bit. They look like they've got something uh, going on. Um, with, uh, with they've got something going on. <laughs> They look like they've got they've they've worked out how to make how to make it work, and uh, Talborg and Barrick perhaps a little bit behind, but it's definitely those two sets of two cars um, which are going to be in the mix, I think. Um, but picking one from any of those four is anyone's guess. Quite frankly, um, when I was watching Talborg and Barrick, Barrick was pushing Talborg around, so I guess Talborg would would take the win in that situation unless Barrick does something crazy on the final lap. But uh, there we go. Well, last season. Of course, Torborg took a double win here at KW Super Speed. And in fact, that was his first win in Touring Pro Series. That was last season. And of course, since then, he's won another 19 races and leads the TPS win count by quite a margin. This was the scene of his first Touring Pro Series win. A double win he took on that, week, that weekend as well. And that's incredibly difficult to do, considering the, uh, the closeness of the, the competition on this track. So we're looking forward to see whether that, he actually manages to do that once again. In Season 2, it was Braham and uh, Marty Pierce who took the win in Season 2. And uh, Marty Pierce's win was um, infamous also for ending the career, the ATCC career of Brandon Lawson. Who competed in the first one and a half season up until that point. And uh, unfortunately was never seen again. But back to the action here. And we're about to go to qualification. Right now, you can see all the teams teaming up. There's the two black Team Portugal five cars of uh, Barbosa and Lopez, Duarte Lopez, that is. Very different proposition here today. After the Nürburgring, a wet Nürburgring, we've now got a very dry oval track. Such, such, not such of a, a big deal for the veterans in this series, but uh, there's a few drivers in here who've never r- r- raced this before in the ATCC. Van Dorn is the most noticeable one. Elio Lucchese, also one of those. Guato Lopez, Hugo Barbosa. Danny Asbury is not one known for his love of the ovals. So we'll look to see how he gets along. Also, Alessio Lucchese is not familiar with this particular circuit. 
in these particular cars in a racing format, but of course it's going to be very difficult. So it's all, all very well driving by yourself, but once you're in a pack, it's quite, uh, quite nerve-wracking. It only takes one person in the pack to make a small mistake, and it can take out several cars and put put an end to their race. So that's the uh, that's the big difference between the uh, the sort of circuit racing we're used to, and the other racing we'll get today. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether whether that plays a part actually in the in the leaders battle, uh, whether someone makes a big error and uh, takes out several of the leaders, and you can end up with a quite topsy-turvy result today. Kind of do, and that's exactly what happened in the Martin Pierce incident. Back in season two, there was a big incident in the front of the field where um, they were trying to lap a car and um, they both ended up with a big damage in the wall. So, so a couple of them out of the race and Martin Pierce came sending through and said, Thank you very much, boys. I'll take that win. We'll see if that happens here today. Hopefully, it doesn't, but it's always, it's always exciting if it does. And uh, I, I would be lying if I said that I didn't want it to happen because it would be extremely entertaining. On the last lap, though, please, so we get some close racing all the way through. <laughs> So that's the thing about sim racing is that you can you can wish for accidents and it doesn't feel wrong. Yes. Uh, interesting how nice. interesting how Via exited the pit lane that, that time round. Uh, in the race, they have to exit and follow the apron all the way around. In, in qualifying, obviously it being Super Bowl, there's no other cars on the track mm -hmm. in race, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but there are, are strict guidelines for where you enter and re um, uh, exit and re-enter the track in the race. And Francisco VR is on his out lap, uh, on his hot lap, sorry. He's the first of the front runners to do so. I think he was the first guy on track. He was immediately out of the pit lane. Obviously felt he's got a bit of, bit of a rhythm. Keep the rhythm going rather than uh, have, it, have a bit of a calm down. We're going to have to be uh, really hot on the uh, on the keys to catch everyone's qualifying lap. Everyone seems to be diving out onto the track trying well, to get their lap early whilst being in the rhythm. Let's see what Beer can do. He's just about to cross the line. And it's going to be a high 45, you see, 45.652, that's really good actually, by yourself, that's superb, by himself, and uh, NATO's out on track as well, who else is out on track? Tor uh, Torborg's out on track, but NATO, Van Dorn's out on track, 45.7, that's very good as well. What has NATO got? 45.8 from Amaral, 46.4 from Michael Carver, like you said, it's filling up. 46.3 from Elio Lucchese, what has Miguel NATO got for his teammates? Braham has ruined his lap. He's going to be at the back of the field, 57.476. He's made a big mistake somewhere, a huge mistake. Not sure what he's done there. NATO's coming towards the line now. Can he beat his teammate's time? 45.683. No, he can't. Villa's holding on to pole at the moment. Torborg back in fifth on a 45.9. Barbosa on a 45.9 also as well. Who else is out on track? Try and catch them as they go around. Of course, they're completing their laps extremely quickly here. Barrick is not on track. Vincent Kahn isn't. Kaido isn't. Reggie Blaine isn't. Hugo Gonzalez is. Let's follow Hugo Gonzalez. Where's he going to fit into the equation? He's seventh. He's seventh. Oh, get the right uh, <laughs> There we go. And he's just behind Barbosa, his fellow Team Portugal member. Behind Jesper Torborg also as well. Also, where you start isn't quite so crucial on this uh, this type of circuit, as everybody knows. It's still very difficult to battle your way through the pack. The stuff of Van Dorn will be pleased to be in third um, be. at present. I think there's a few drivers might 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 be able to beat him. Uh, Barrick and Kyoto are the obvious, obvious names on that list. Van Scheffingen goes 15th. This is Van Scheffingen's first appearance in, the, in Server 1 this season. He's 15th at the moment, so very solid indeed. He's got experience at this track also as well, of course. So who's left to go out? Eric. Khan's still in the pits. Kaido's still in the pits. Reggie Blaine's still in the pits. So it's just Barrick out on track at the moment. Let's follow along with him. Let's go on board with him. The top is round, round this track as he does the hot lap here, Toby. Well, it keeps us saying it's absolutely flat out. He's got... Uh He's using fifth gear uh, for this. He'll have fifth gear as his uh, go gear and sixth gear as his draft gear. And he'll be using fifth gear for the whole of the qualifying lap. Turn in just early enough so that you get right into the groove and uh, just drift out slightly onto the dotted white lines and then back in to get a good exit. The car will go a little bit light as it sort of rises over this crest and you'll steer towards the wall just to correct. He's made it, made it work through there. Now it's easy. You're looking for some lights on the right hand side of the track. Not that set. 
but this set, and as soon as you see them, you turn left, hard left, aim for the apex, just clip the apex there, and then let the car run all the oh, way to the wall. The just okay, about going to gonna keep it oh, beautiful from Keith, well, just kept it out the wall. It was under steering, but he, he managed to keep down. flat out. Tenth and a half down, what has he got? 45-8, so he's 4th. So he won't be particularly pleased with that because VR is going to get the bonus points at the moment for that pole position. Who else is on track? We've got Kaedo and Khan and Blaine to go. Khan is on track, the first of those guys. Here is Khan in his blue and black BAU Relentless BMW and also with those signature yellow tinted windows. Oh, God, I hate those windows, Toby. And Vincent Khan <laughs> has come to the end of his lap. He's always recognisable though, I guess. And here comes Vincent Khan now. He's ten and a half down on VR as well, so he might slot him somewhere where Barrick Amaron Torbog are. He's sixth. Torbog's back to seventh. So there's a bit of a gap there, crucially, between Barrick and Torbog. Fourth to seventh, look. Whereas VR and NATO are, are on the front row of the grid. That could be ominous for the field. So if they got a good start, they can get away and um, set off, set about gapping the field. They're, uh, they're in prime position, aren't they, Team Portugal? And here's Reggie Blaine now. He's about to finish his lap also as well. He's going to be right in the mix of the middle field. 14th. He goes 14th. So he will be some way off, of course, his teammates, Vincent Kahn. So I wonder if they can help each other out at all. And now Kaido. Where can he put himself? He needs to be up there. He needs to be there alongside Pedro Amaral, at least. So that he can also team with his teammates. Amaral and Kaido in Team Portugal too. It's a decent first sector from Kaido. What has he come to, got come towards the second sector? Third sector here is just a run the line. And there's the second sector, 0.19 down. So he's looking to slot in right about 4th, 5th or 6th, which is right on target to be around his teammate Pedro Amaral. And he's going to cross the line now in 7th. In 7th, and that bumps Torbog down another position. So 4th and 8th for FDR can then. That's probably their worst qualifying performance of the season so far. And in the most crucial one for um, teammates to be close together. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though, but it's... It could be that that's a small excuse me momentum loss at any point at the start could gift the momentum to VR and NATO just to uh, get away from the field. Of course, Kaido and Amaral close together. Van Dorn was hoping to team up with Yuri Braham, of course. This is crucial, this this um, Toby, because I'm sure they were wanting to team up together because of the fact they don't have any teammates themselves, Desi designated teammates anyway. And Braham was right at the back of the field, 23rd. How, how he's managed to lose a whole second, I don't know, he must have hit the wall very hard and spun or something. He's, he's managed to lose a whole 11 seconds. seconds. Le well, yeah, more. Yeah. Obviously he's hit a wall somewhere, not quite sure how he's done that. Pretty difficult to spin here, especially for uh, someone of Braham's ability and experience at this track also as well. But congratulations to Francisco Villa. Here he is. 45.652. He said the very first guy to set a lap time and... Uh, Nobody beat it, Toby. No, and uh, it's good that we caught the whole of that lap. Actually, it, d it did look pretty good, but I, d I didn't think it was it was absolutely perfect. In fact, uh, Keith uh, was two tenths down, and his didn't look too bad. He was slightly, as you say, slightly missed the apex, slightly understeer through the final corner. But that just shows you how close oval racing can be. And uh, obviously, VR had slightly more experience in the BMW. Whether that counts for anything or not, I don't know. Um, I, w I probably wouldn't say. I would say no, because of the specialised nature of the track. And, yeah, it is very yeah, but it, it you know it's just might be a slight advantage that he has, um, but it, in any in any case, it's uh, it's good that we've see we can see VR and NATO up front together. It was good for them anyway. Yeah, and uh, Van Dorn, NATO. Van Dorn will want to uh, want to tag along with someone, I think. Um, Bar I, wonder if Barry... he, I, wonder if, I wonder if he'll team up with Khan. Uh, Toby, sorry, to but Khan and Blaine are quite far apart. It's Khan right now. Khan is in 6th and Blaine is sort of like 14th or 15th. I wonder if Van Dorn and Khan will try to team up. I was just going to say, I wonder if um, if Talbot gets nowhere near Barrick, whether whether or not um, Barrick and uh, Barrick and Van Dorn might might team up. But uh, mm. it's anyone. There's, there's, can... there's already team tensions at FDR. Can then? I'm not sure that go down wow. too well. <laughs> well, Talbot has to get ahead of Khan uh, quite quickly and uh, get onto the back of Barrick. 
But uh, Khan and Barak have been teammates before, so. They have. Yeah, Both I mean, Canadian, as you can see. We can we could easily we could easily end up in a situation where you've got not just a pair of cars, but you've got five or six cars pushing each other along in two intriguing, two, huh? Two two lines, so. We could have a Tarbog pushing Khan and pushing Barak. Yep. It's, we have um, to line them up. We've got Amaral and Kaido. They're in perfect position, really. Couldn't have planned that better if they tried. I know, yeah. <laughs> Look at they Barbosa in the background start. as well. So you've got, you've got, almost you've got five Portuguese dri drivers in a line. If, if Van Dorn gets to jump on NATO and moves across to the right hand side of the grid, you can have uh, five Portuguese drivers pushing each other along. I wouldn't recommend Van Dorn to jump ahead of NATO. To be honest, I'd let NATO stay on his outside. And you stay on the inside, Van Dorn, because you've got three Portuguese being behind you. And if you go outside, then the fine Portuguese were inside of you, and you never see them again. See, this is this is why I'd, I'd be useless at over racing. I wouldn't even think of that. It's uh, it's a completely different philosophy for me. Um, but uh, it's it's going to be interesting to watch. Cannot afford to lose a draft here. I mean, you don't have to be pushed as long as you keep the draft, no. and you, you you you're okay. But cannot afford to lose that draft. Once you lose a draft. Absolutely screwed. You would not catch up at all unless you have a blinding pit stop. Or you've got someone pushing you. And an and interesting thing also as well. So remember last last time out at um, at Nurburgring GP, we saw VR come out of the pits and Harry and Hassel and um, Barrick. What had happened was that the, the por Team Portugal guys had figured out exactly where the sector uh, timing point for the pit out ent entrance is. And of course, the, the game... Um, Unlocks your, speed, your speed, pit speed, yeah, pit speed limiter. What's the problem with that? Pit speed limiter, just after where the actual, um, the actual time of beacon is, so that, so that in case the game, you know, does it in error, and you, you, you get and that way, you, you don't get penalised at all. They figured out if you switch it off just before, then you can gain a couple of tenths entering and, ex and exiting. I wonder if they would be able to do that here today, because a couple of tenths here is worth a lot. Well, if they could, that, that secret's now out there to everyone. <laughs> well, not not out there everyone, to everyone who's uh, racing, because they can't hear me. Nah, uh, I'd, I'd have a mole watching the broadcast. <laughs> this is where we come in, we come into organised teams. Let's just go through the rest of the grid, of course. It's in the top ten. Here's 11th and 12th, Asbury and Lopez. For a driver who doesn't like um, the ovals, and for a, he's not Italian either, even though it says Italy, he is actually American. Not sure why he's selected the Italian flag. And, uh, but he's in it. 12th is Lopez. 13th is Swiderski. Of course, he's very experienced in the BMW as well. 14th is Robert Tiles. 15th, Reggie Blaine. So there's Reggie Blaine back in 15th, whereas Carnes will be in 6th. And you see how difficult the pitch entry here is also, by the way. So we watch one of the uh, Terra Australis drivers come into the pits. That was either Wood or Isles. I'm not quite sure. I'm thinking it's Wood. And uh, 16th, Reese Gardner. 17th is Lucchese. So we'll look, maybe look for uh, Gardner, Isles and Wood to team up, because they're all from Australia, of course. Michael Carver in 18th, making the place Michael Van Scheppingen. I'm pretty sure Michael Van Scheppingen and Yuri Braham will now team up together because, of course, they're both members of FDR. And the fact that Yuri's way down the grid, I would guess that will be the case. 21st, Gary Lennon, 22nd, Alessio the Kizik. Gary Lennon's also a virgin on this track, popping his KW Super Speedway tra chariot. He'll, he'll like that when he watches the broadcast later. He will. <laughs> And uh, hello to uh, Gary Lennon, our resident angry Scott, grumpy Scott, amiable, amiable Scott, hard charging Scott, whatever you want to call him. Hopefully, we'll get uh, another interview. We uh, heard him on the uh, Twin Pro Series broadcast of the Clio the other day. We did indeed. To hear his thoughts on the ATCC. I wasn't pleased to hear him on the honour either, because I should have been on the podium. But never mind. <laughs> <laughs> But we're seeing here a dress rehearsal. Here is a dress rehearsal. This is, uh, I think this is actually, this is, this is Yuri Braham, I believe. Uh, is it Yuri Braham? It is Yuri Braham, yes. Because, of course, they've got very similar cars. I'm not sure why he's not just using the, um, the FDD BMW skin that Lauritsen has already for the normal space. But never mind. Just going to confuse me on purpose, Yuri. Thanks for that. <laughs> We've got Van, Van Scheppen and Braham in the same same cars, and Swiderski. Thank you for that, Yuri. Lovely. It's as bad as you driving a lot of diesel. I know he'll appreciate that joke. So look, he's he's with Van Dorn, isn't he? Look, he's he is. with Van Dorn, but they're they're nowhere. So they're nowhere. So he's not. I mean, if I was Yuri, I'd be teaming up with uh, Van Scheppen right now. If I was Van Dorn, I'd be trying to desperately get into the get into the camp of say a Keith Barrick or something like that. 
and just say we'll use three cards to start with. Thing is though, how much does Barak and Tolba want to want to help Van Dorn after the the schooling he gave them at Nurburgring GP? I don't think they want to help him in the championship at all. You could see Van Dorn pretty very friendless, I think here, because he's very much a lone wolf, isn't he, at the, the, the front of this field. So, we've got two minutes to go before the race. Now we've seen Qualify and Tobit. Who's your favourite now? Oh, don't ask me this question for every race, Ryan. I always predict <laughs> someone and it's always never them. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to go with Bia, simply because he's on pole. That means absolutely nothing. Um, it could be Talborg, it could be Khan, it could be someone from further back. That Someone could mess up the pit stops. That we could have a massive crash at the front of the field. This is the interesting thing about oval racing. It's completely irrelevant, actually, where you qualify, as you were saying earlier. Yes, pretty much irrelevant, isn't it? I mean, obviously, if you're a Braham, you're, you're way back in the field, and chances of the win are remote, but, I mean, if you're anywhere in the side top, you know, 10 or 12, then you've got, got a chance of winning. You can see the left-hand side there, we've got the wonderful purple building of the KW Super Speedway, and we've got the grid forming up on your right-hand side, just in the distance. And here they are, the Formula up, going to have a rolling start, of course. Which is very standard for we're on the start for both races here today. No, no standing start for the second race, of course, because it's because it is an oval. And it's the procedure that we have in uh, in all oval racing, NASCAR, IndyCar, or otherwise. We like a bit of NASCAR as well. Two weeks until the day, Daytona 500. I can't wait. Might be yeah. one week to the, might be one week until the Daytona 500. Might be I was lying. just going to say, isn't, isn't, it, isn't, it just, isn't it just eight days or something? Yes, excellent stuff because it's two weeks until VH should be cars. Can't wait for that either. Anyway, back to the uh, ATCC. Back to real life racing. <laughs> back to yes, back to the, what's happening in the here and now. This has been uh, giving me my, my fix over the uh, over the winter months. And they're about to set off on that formation lap. Any second now. There we go. Away from grid, they go. Some starting faster than others because it doesn't really matter because they're all going to stay in line here. This is going to be a real test for drivers like Van Dorn and Kaido and Amaral as they have not taken part in a rolling start on an oval before and it is very different because every tenth is so crucial everyone tends to bunch up much much closer than even on a um, normal circuit. with Van Dorn, uh, with uh, a Van Dorn, on board with VR, looking back at the rest of the field. Down, long back straight here, this is where you reach your highest speeds, I think, or I'm going to get told off by, by Keith after that, after the event, I think now. You may actually reach your high speeds on the front straights, but never mind, I'm saying you reach your high speed <laughs> in this bit here. It's pretty it's high speed all the way round, let's be it honest. It is indeed. And here, it, here is where you enter the pits also as well. You have to be below the white line before that final corner. Everyone's quite spread out at the moment. I wouldn't recommend that too much. Oops, it must be very frustrating as well for if somebody is out of line ever so slightly because the other driver can't, can't um, catch up and overtake. So if... Uh, one driver leaves a gap, the rest have to leave a gap, and it's very frustrating indeed. And they're coming towards the line now. It's VR who leaves the field. NATO, Van Dorn, Barak, Amaral, Khan, Kaido, Tarbor. Those are the top eight. And coming up towards the line now, and they are about to cross it in round four. It's on way, and VR leads away from the field and it looks like a good start there from Van Dorn who's menacing already already also as well menacing is Pedro Amaral trying to go down the inside of Van Dorn not able to do so Khan bit of contact there between those drivers in to turn one and look at those line is stern it's exactly where Van Dorn needs to be in that line of Portugal drivers and they come out now of turn one almost three wide down the straight and it's VR who still leads he is two abreast with NATO still actually NATO just taking the lead ever so slightly now as he comes down the long straight Van Dorn trying to push uh, VR and Nato's got going through into the lead and VR's going to push Nato I believe trying to get involved also with Barrick but Van, Do uh, Van Dorn very clever there from Van Dorn he tried to follow Barrick up the circuit trying to push Barrick because he knows what the two team Portugal drivers are going to try and get away 
and he's going to, go, going to go and try and team up with Keith Berwick. Interesting that Amaral at the start got out of the slipstream and he dropped back hugely as a result. He had a jump on the leaders actually, but uh, the leaders were in, in, the, in the slipstream and uh, Amaral dropped back big time and he's lost out and he's down in uh, seventh position now. And, uh, Look how close he's is to the front of the field. He's got his teammate company. VR and NATO right in prime position and Talbot's made it up to fifth as well. If Van Dorn doesn't get in the way too much, this could easily be a four or five, five horse race. Van Dorn actually would be better off getting with uh, Vincent Kahn right now. Vincent Kahn's just right there. Vincent Kahn's just desperately hanging on, as you can see. Just on the back of that, that group. Just about keeping um, enough of a draft to keep up. Because they're drafting all five of them. Fastest lap there from Vincent Kahn. So he's definitely keeping on to the back of that group. Fastest lap from Vincent Kahn. Former winner here, of course. Former pole sitter also. And the top six are making a break for it. The top six are making a break for it. Because Amaral and Kaido have got separated. Amaral and Kaido have got separated. Where is Kaido? Kaido's back now to 11th, so they've got separated, it's a 6 horse race, 7 horse, seven horse seven. race perhaps, actually, yeah, because seven, Amaral Amaral's has, has managed it, hasn't he, perfect, he's just got into, it's just about within that sort of half second window, look at uh, Van Dorn, oh, and now Barrick and Van Dorn are side by side, and that's not good news for Van Dorn, because he's let Torbo go through, and Torbo's going to push Barrick, this he is got shuffled, he got shuffled by Barrick, he's got shuffled, and now Khan move. isn't helping him either, he's getting left, He's going out to try on the outside, fastest up there from Amaral this time. So everyone's at the back of the group, gets the, gets the longest draft. Now Van Dorn's all the way back to seventh seat. Just in the blink of an eye, he goes from fourth to seventh. And he cannot afford to lose his group. No, none of them can. Nathan and VR making a small break. Parik and Tolbog determined to get back where with them. You can imagine the TS channel's going crazy right now, Tobit. I think uh, NATO and Vio will be very happy right now with where they are. Um, Amaral doesn't looks like he doesn't know what to do with himself, and uh, Van Dorn and Khan need to get together if they're going to stick with this group. They uh, do. Amaral, Amaral looks very lost without his drafting partner. I don't know quite what he thinks he's doing. He's <laughs> getting <laughs> he's he's get the like, slipstream of someone. Looking, looking very out of place, isn't he? Not, not sure exactly where to go. And now he's pushing Van Dorn. He said, oh, and Barrick and Torborg have caught Vio and NATO. No doubt about that. They've definitely caught up to the back of them. They're at I least... There we go, another, another couple of tents there, out of them. I actually think they're in the better position, actually, because they've got the extra little bit of slipstream for the Portuguese drivers. Look how and quickly they've, they've broke away from I know, that group who are I know, squabbling it's behind. Just, that's just all it is, isn't it? It's just that uh, that teamwork has just enabled them to do that. And uh, Barak and Talborg... In fact, you can see Barak is not actually pushing Talborg around the track. He's uh, just leaving a little bit of a gap, Look making at that. sure they're, they're behind. Look they're right there now. Look it's at the a full-way draft got. once again. Yeah, and uh, we'll see uh, Buster's lap from Talbot this time round, I'm sure of it. He's a four-way draft all the way round. Oh, Keith Barry takes it. Barrick oh, Barrick, takes sorry, it. Barrick's, ta Barrick's pushing Talbot, that's why. No, nope, so, Barrick's uh, in third. Barrick is in third. Talbot is pushing Barrick. Okay. Hmm. Obviously, Barrick that's has benefited there from the draft of uh, Miguel Nato. That's not, the, uh, that's not the tactic they were using in practice, so... Here's Khan, Van Dorn and Amaral. Three-way draft is not working as well as a two-way draft, just like the, the Daytona of the last couple of years. The, the, the two-car draft is working much better than the uh, than the train, as it were. And Danny Asper is talking fourth position, uh, eighth position, eighth, eighth position, sorry. And that's pretty good for a driver who doesn't even like the ovals. And we've got Gonsalves and um, Kaido trying to team up. Kaido trying to move back towards the front of the field. But of course, he's back now in ninth position. Of course, drivers will be fighting this problem for that eighth position, which means they start the front of the field for race two. Further back in the field, there's Podersky. Look at this gaggle of cars. Just a, it's a big, long train. None of them break close to each other, unfortunately. They don't seem to be making any progress, but it is a big, long train of cars. Nobody's getting lost. Is anybody actually off the back of the group? It doesn't seem like they are. Where is Yuri Braham? He's in 14th, so Yuri Braham has made his way up the field pretty well. And in fact, there's nobody actually lost. Michael Carver, Gary Lennon, and Michael Van Scheppenger on the back of the field. These drivers need to work together to push this way back up to the back of the lead pack. At the front of the field, NATO still leads from VR, who still leads from Barrick, who still leads from Torbor. And now Khan and Van Dorn are very close together and seem to be pulling away from Amaral. Look, Amaral is in danger of losing this. Van Dorn, look at that. You can almost see the body language there. Very determined to push Khan away from Amaral. Look at the gap the leads have got. It's a whole two seconds on this, uh, on this little group. Just three cars, and Amaral's going to struggle to stick with these two actually as well. 
Yeah, and, Van, uh, uh, can you see the determination almost in the body language of Van Dorn's car to push Carl along? He's desperate to get back up with the lead, isn't he? He's not used to not being at the front, I don't think. And uh, you can you can just tell he's a little bit disappointed that he's been shoveled out of that group. Very difficult, of course, because his teammate is in server two. And of course, Yuri Braham, who I'm pretty sure he was hoping to team up with, qualified right to the back of the field. So he's very frustrated. The circumstances have really come back to bite him, but he's got a decent drafting partner there in Khan. And Amaral is just about clinging on to the back of that draft, but he thinks he's in danger of losing it. Barak Torbog Via and NATO. Those familiar names that we say so many times during the broadcast, Toby. The top four in the championship. The top two teams in the team's championship. And they're showing why they are the top four drivers, aren't they, Toby? Absolutely, they're nose to tell and uh, they've done their homework. They've got their tactics right and uh, they know exactly what they need to do. Look at Barak pushing the two leaders as well. Nobody wants to make a move at this stage. They all want to pile in the pit lane and make sure that they're actually behind so that they can duck out of the slipstream later on in the race. Uh, interestingly enough, interesting enough sorry, sorry to interrupt, but interesting enough, last season, Torbo let the other drivers through. He was in the first position, he dropped back to third. He let the other drivers th th through so he could pit at the same time as those drivers and not mess up the pit entry. He could use those, those other cars as a judge of where to break himself. There's another example of uh, how Torbo thinks on the racetrack. I remember that it was a, an excellent, excellent decision, wasn't it, by uh, it was. Talborg? Excellent. He used that. He used that. Um, that tactic actually uh, managed to get him the get him the championship. I would say. And now, oh, the door is around. The door is around. And Carl and Amaral's Where is a big pile up? Oh, that's a huge oh no! Crash. Oh, over the barrier almost. Drivers are scattered everywhere. Engines are blowing up. Oh, this is huge, huge, huge news in the championship, in this race almost. Who is out? How many is, cars is that? How many cars are involved there? Who's left going? I can't tell. Who's... Lennon's still going. It looks like anybody but the top... Carver up to 11. This is exactly what we were saying, Brian. Just oh, one they, small uh, error. Uh, Van Dorn, one of the drivers, one of the rookies, was involved. Oh, oh, all we can do, Amaral all we can out. do, Ryan, is speculate at this stage. But Amaral, Van Dorn, and Vincent Khan were together, and we saw them spinning. So they must have had to come together. So they must, someone must have got sideways and been pushed into Khan, the barrier. It must, have, it must have been something. To do Look with how Khan many and people are out. Amaral's out. Gonçalves, Vincent Khan, Danny Asprey, Yuri Braham, Darius Fazerski, the Casey's a lap down as well. Oh, it's, it's, it's it's mayhem. Unbelievable. What happened? But meanwhile, Veer's in the pits. Keith Farrick and Jesper Talburg are still pushing are. each other around. They are. They, they almost came around the track and they were still having an accident. Well, that's unbelievable. Kano's now in third, on a way to an easy fifth, it looks like. Look at that. Elio Lugazi as well in, in fourth. Obviously, there are some people in the pit lane. This will be... This will be sensational. But VR's, VR, of course, and NATO are still going. They've come out the pits line stern, so that's perfect. A little bit of a good... Better pits up there for NATO, which will uh, annoy VR, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, uh Garner into the pit as well. He was involved in that, I'm pretty sure. Van Dorn, of course, was involved in that. Absolutely. And uh, quite how he's got away with that unscathed, I'm not quite sure. That's exactly the, what we feared, wasn't it? Oh, uh, absolutely. I think Van Dorn has, has, got, has come out a bit unscathed because I think I saw him just spinning down the middle of the track. Yes, and it, it somehow I didn't get involved in that. Somehow... <laughs> Somehow, everyone who came piling in in the background and got caught up in the mess managed to avoid him, so he managed to just dive into the pit lane, use that slower speed to his advantage, and he'll actually get a pretty decent result from this in the end. He should do. He might even get up in that top eight. Yeah. If he can get in the top eight, that'll be... Wow, get out of jail free. But anyway, it's, it's Torborg and Barrick now, so this, they've swapped over. They've gone back to the drafting like they were doing in practice, Toby. Yeah, that, that's what they were doing in practice that way round. I just had to work out what you said in my head. <laughs> yeah, that, that, <laughs> is the way, that is the way round that they've practiced. So, uh, they, yeah, Barry and Talbot. So, obviously, obviously, they couldn't shuffle around without losing the draft. So, uh, quick, good thinking by these, uh, by these guys. So, let's see what they're going to do. They're not hitting this time around, of course. About 15 of 30. We're halfway through the race. We've seen a huge, huge accident involving... Pretty much half the field, more than half the field was involved, and some one third of the field is now out of the race as a result. 
Several of the drivers now on lap down, for example. Eight car, is it eight cars? It's, it's, in fact, it's just six cars. Just However, six, we've, we've also got Reese Garden, who's two laps down. Blaine and Lennon are also down. The Lennon are also two laps down as well, so... I mean, we've got six cars out, and several, several others... ...adversely affected, <laughs> to, say, to put it mildly. But Barrick and Tolbo aren't pitting yet, either. It's interesting to see whether their long strategy works over NATO and VR's short strategy. They're still doing decent lap times, only five fours, a little bit lower than they would want to do. What they've got this, t what they've got this time around? They need to keep it in the low 45s. Oh 45 no, that's eight. no good. That's no, no good. Because NATO and VR have fresh tyres, and they're going to undercut them. Well, you see, Surely. the thing is, Keith was saying that you you only lose a few tenths by by not pitting early. So it's a few tenths. That's that's a lot on this track, right? Well, yeah, but it could have taken NATO and VR to a couple of laps to get back up to each other. We did quite... it's off camera. They, they, they immediately got back up to each other, because I, I did check okay. as they were half around their, their out lap. Into the pits comes Michael Van Scheppingen. Here he is. Lucasian also as well. And Michael Carver. Michael Carver on for a great result here. If he just keeps it together. Of course, he is that type of driver. Always keeps it together. Here is NATO and VR. And they're plowing on together. And Van Dorn... He's going around the track. Will he be able to get out ahead of the other drivers? Where will he come out? Because he's already pitted, right? So he should be able to get out ahead of Carver, Van Scheppingen and, the, and those drivers and be in the top eight, Tobin. Which would be, quite frankly, astonishing. It's, it's incredible, but it's, it's all... Uh, it's complete pot luck. I was saying it couldn't be topsy-turvy. It's actually not going to be topsy-turvy at the front. Well, it's not. We still have a good race in front. Curse we? of the commentator, which probably is now, isn't it? <laughs> They're probably going to end up in a huge pilot. But the point but is... But and Barrick are in. The point is, oh, this should be interesting to see where they come out. But the point is that, uh, that because there's been such oh, a huge perfect. incident, that they, 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 we could see anyone in the, in the, the put on pole for race two. And look at Gareth Lennon going go for the glory, not oh, hitting yeah. and taking the lead, the lead of the race. <laughs> Completely pointless. <laughs> What's it like? <laughs> uh, this, okay, where are Barrick and uh, Tal? Are they ahead of NATO? Uh, and they are at the moment. They're still exiting the pits. Of course, it takes a long time to get up to speed. And Barrick and Talbot, quite a big gap between them. It's about the same as NATO. There, there they, they come. Are. Here they come. Here we come. NATO and VR coming down the straight now. They've got the momentum, of course. They're already together, but it should be that they'll they're be able to tackle front. to each don't other again. They've dove in front. They've dove in front. Oh, taken the lead. It. They've taken the lead. I can't quite believe that. The I did not. Oh! As well. oh! Almost big contact there between Torbog and NATO. Oh, VR in the wall. VR hit the wall quite hard there. How much momentum? How much did he lost? that affect him? I don't know. It seems to be all right. Seems okay. He, he, he hit the wall pretty hard there. He did. Barrick, he gave it a huge Barrick now lap. leads. Barrick now leads. Tolbog second. NATO third. VR in fourth. What do you think of that hit, Toby? Oh, VR's VR's losing it. Look, he's losing the the, the draft. It's, it's damaged, isn't it? He's gone. Watch him. Watch him disappear. Or, or is it just loss of momentum? I don't know. It'd be interesting to watch on board. See the, whether the gaps closing in the victory or not. Let's see if the cars are getting bigger in our screen or smaller. Which is my command. As they go through the final corner now. Oh, great line there from VR. Beautiful line there from VR. He's gained okay, quite it, it a bit of ground. I, I actually don't know. It just lost a bit of momentum, I think. It must have been that, yes. Maybe NATO... That was, well, that was well better than NATO. I wonder if... That's wonderful. Well, I think NATO dropped off the back of the other drivers as well. So either made a mistake or just lifted off ever so slightly. Perfect place to lift off as well. So the bass at the front of the field is very much on. And Van Dorn's in fifth, Toby. That's just crazy. The guy, it's, nothing stick to him. It, uh, Amaral is, he's going to have Kayada coming, cruising up behind him. If, if Van has got a bit of damage, which I assume he must have, uh, must have some kind of damage. Uh, well, Kayada Kayada, looks like he's got damage. He's well, got, he got, only he used one, one headlight. Well, yeah, that's, he must have hit one of the cars. And he needs to turn those off. It's a shame we'd have no replay in race. <laughs> I know, he needs to turn those off. Kayada, he would be penalised for that, unfortunately. I won't grab with them, never mind. And uh, Barrick, Tolbog, NATO, VR are now coming to the lap traffic. I think that's Gary Lennon ahead of them. And Lennon at the head of that. Will he get out of the way? He does get out of the way. The rest of the, the leaders go through. This is very much poised. Oh, the wall! Oh, Lennon! What on earth was that? It just... What, did, what just, was he doing? Just straight in the wall. That was bizarre. It's like, it's like he forgot to turn. And he's in in the pit of the race. That was just bizarre. But 
that's, like it, it's that's like what we're talking about, isn't it? Just, you know, the, the inexperience on an oval track, no matter how experienced you are as a racer, the oval is so specialised, isn't it? And just something just caught him out. I have no idea what crazy. I... Meanwhile, look at this! Oh, side by oh, side! Yeah. NATO! Straight up the inside of Jesper Torborg! How's that? Uh, Talbot's lost his, uh, Talbot, Barrett's lost Talborg now, this will be interesting, Talbot will have to sneak in behind these, uh, the well, whole group Max, of them. that was beautiful driving there from Talborg, you know, he just, he knew he had to get back, oh, oh, in the wall, Francesco VR rolling over and over down the track, another huge accident, we've never seen such big accidents here at KW Super Speedway, but here today, we've seen the biggest of the drivers involved in huge accidents, and VR is another one involved. VR spinning upside down down the circle. We didn't quite see exactly what happened there. Must have been contact with Torborg perhaps because Torborg has lost the draft also as well. It's left NATO and Barrick the challenge for the win. Van Dorn by VR as well. There was a 20 second gap. That's how big the lead was of the top four. And VR has only dropped back to how fifth. On earth is VR's how is still going? How he's still able to continue? I have no idea. Huge contact with the wall. It just flipped his car. And it must have been it must have been squeezed into the wall with uh, with Talbot because that was like big a big damage. Uh, oh, huge! I can I only imagine. Kaido, um, I would expect Kaido to breeze past him and maybe Lucchese and Wood as well if they um, get their skates on. But Wood as well is going to be on pole position for uh, look for, at the, for look race at the one. Car. Oh. It just ruined. Wow! Car will feel like a boat. Look at the front of the field. It's NATO and Barrick. This is the uh, race of the win. So the, we need to follow these leaders now because I was I was just saying they fall cruise away or it'll be easy. <laughs> now I have yeah, no you, idea. You, what you said it was not going to be topsy turvy as well. Oh, I don't know. Curse of the shouldn't open my mouth ever. <laughs> it's Barrick and NATO at the front of the field, and we know NATO should have been patient at Nurburgring, but he's not usually patient, is he? He tries his best to give the impression that he is. <laughs> he's not patient. At all. I've never seen him impatient. I did express surprise in the driver interview. I think he was very happy that I expressed surprise at his patience, but uh, never mind. <laughs> That's I'm what I mean. He was, he was making it out like it was, oh yes, I, I, I always do this. <laughs> and uh, NATO right in behind Barrick. I, I fancy Barrick to hold him to the lead, you know. Do you? I'm just going to call that, I'm gonna call that right now. I, NATO will find a way through. I, I have no idea, so I'm just going to say it could be anyone's, it could be anyone's win. Here comes well, NATO. Going for it now. Going down the inside, and it's Ryan only five is laps left. Ryan. Absolute rubbish once again. <laughs> while we've while we've been talking <laughs> absolute, absolute rubbish, rubbish, the race is nearly finished. So uh, this could finished. this could be a race winning move. Reminds me of Montoya and Michael Andretti at Michigan in 2000. There was a close finish there. They just swapped positions for the final five or six laps. Montoya got it on the line. This it could be a Ooh. repeat of that. Look at you with your oval knowledge. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh. oh! Barrick, a little bit of a nudge there to NATO, sending him a bit of an, into a bit of a drift. That was, it was mal control actually was, by NATO, a little over correction there would have sent him straight into the wall. That was NATO being NATO. Torborg still, off the back of that, he's going to finish third, there's no doubt about that, unless he crashes as well by himself, and which is not beyond the uh, realms, realms of possibility. I wonder if Kaido will let VR through on the line. Oh, and the wall again, VR! He's not going to do it if he does that all the time. Is that uh, could easily be what caused that, uh, a little bit what caused that accident, because he'd been understeering you, you, into that you wall are, you are quite correct. a few times. Mm. Absolutely, didn't think so of I that. I wonder if that's actually why that's, that accident was caused in the first place. Maybe it wasn't contact at all, maybe it was just he slipped it up into the wall, got caught at a funny angle. Here oh, comes Barrick! Barrick! He's, he's not sure whether it's... Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing! He's not sure whether to stay in the slipstream or come, come inside. He's gone down... He's on the lower part they? of the track, he's gone on the inside as they head into turn one, so this is where Barrick has he's got to make this move stick now for the rest of the race. Oh, oh contact, was contact between there. the two! Oh, if there was contact, it was very light, but if there wasn't, it would have been a cigarette paper. Thinner than that. And now Barrick and NATO are back in that order again. Barrick and NATO. But of course, NATO wants it to be NATO and Barrick. Paul Wood's up to seventh. He's past Elio the case. We're going to stick with this battle for the final uh, three and a half laps. And they will go by very quickly indeed. And Barrick getting a bit of a gap there on NATO. Not quite able to break any of the draft. In fact, it'll be a perfect draft for NATO because he'll be able to use lots of the slipstream, get lots of momentum. Lap 28 now. Two and a half laps to go. Two and a bit laps to go. NATO, as I said, with that perfect slipstream. 
has now dived on the inside into turn one and taken the lead again. Could that be a mistake though? Because uh, Barrett could easily draft NATO back, come through on the inside on the final couple of laps. If Barrett stays in behind, he's not going to. He's going to go for the move once again. There's only two laps left, guys. It's going to be all about who stays behind and gets the slipstream on that final lap, on that, that final that, back stretch. That, that turn one looks looks decisive, doesn't it? Turn one looks decisive. Whoever's ahead into turn one on the final lap is going to win. And will it be yes. Barrett? Will it be Nato? It won't be Torborg. It won't be Van Dorn. It won't be Villar. It won't be any of those drivers. It certainly won't be Yuri Braham, Swiderski, Al. They were in the pit crying about whose fault it was. Absolutely. And, uh, Barrett, Barrett could have made that move then. I have a feeling he yes. lifted off. Yes. You know, I think he's going to do it on the final lap. You can think of, think of the same thing as I am. But turn one is That's crucial. That's what I do. It's, but you see, now he's sending one up the inside and we have no idea what we're talking about. Well, no, he's not. He's just, he's just um, pulling out so he doesn't hit the back of NATO. Not exactly going for the... For the oh, he, he can't do that when NATO takes the perfect line. And Barrett is slightly... Scrubbing off the speed, but he's, he's in not. The he's in perfect stream. position. This is position A1. But he's not got the momentum off the corner. He wasn't gaining off the corner. Will, will that be enough of the slipstream to help him get past into turn one? It's not going to be enough, I don't think. Nathan's going to dive. Just, just take a slight, just go down at one lane, and he's going to hold the lead. Nato, final lap, holds the lead into turn one. Can he hold off Barrick? Can he hold him off for the second win of the season? Eric hasn't won a race in the ATCC since go Road America it. last season. And he's going to have to go for it on the inside into the final turn because this is the final turn right here, right now. And Barrick is not going to be able to do so. He's been squeezed by NATO. And NATO's going to win it. Barrick almost lost it. NATO with the wall. NATO into the wall. Yeah, here goes Barrick. NATO the wall. Barrick going to get the run to the line. They switch one way. They switch the other way. Who's going to win? Barrick and NATO to the line. It's going to be Barrick. Barrick takes his first win. Well over a year in the ATCC, and somehow, somehow, NATO threw that away. I oh, just pushed too hard in the final turn and clipped the wall, and Barrick was there and like a vulture, taking his opportunity and stealing the win. He'll be delighted with that. What a brilliant drive from Keith Barrett there. He just waited for NATO to make the mistake, got him on the line. Excellent racing in the ATCC. And how Van Dorn managed to get fourth position, I am not quite sure. Kaido in fifth. VR just holding on to sixth. Oh, we've got some huge, huge talking points there, haven't we, Toby? Where do you start? Do you start with a multi multi car pileup? Was that was that Vincent Kahn? Was that Stoffel Van Dorn? Uh, Pedro Amaral involved. We've got six cars out of the race at least. We might have missed one or two. We've got a few cars lapped down. We've got VR. Huge contact with the wall. Somehow managed to carry on. Somehow managed to finish Slipping down the middle of the straight. How he carried on, I have no six. idea. Unbelievable oh. stuff. And then Via, I mean, uh, NATO losing it on the final corner. Oh, he oh. will be kicking himself. If he race two is half himself. as good as that, it's going to be the second best race I've ever watched. <laughs> and uh, who says over racing is boring? Turning left definitely has its advantages. And 8th place was Paul Wood, which means he's on pole position for wow. race 2. So he's really in the hunt. But of course, we've got the big names, Khan and Braham, way back in the field. And we've got people finishing ahead of other people just because they crashed further along the track. Yeah, the same like, accident. Like Yuri Braham, for Yuri example. Braham managed to, get, managed to crash further along the track and, uh, and <laughs> get further up the grids. It actually counted for about 6 positions in the end. But here we are now into the second race. Don't we have time to reflect on the uh, on that first race? But Barrick will be absolutely delighted. Absolutely del delighted. I cannot tell you how how much that will that will mean to him. He'd be really pumped up after that. Because he's been very frustrated not getting a win here. He's all, all, of course he's always getting podium positions. We see that time and again. He's very very consistent. But he's he's struggling for the absolute. Um, the, uh, the, the next level to take the win and uh, he's able to do so uh, more by luck than uh, than judgement I think that time round but uh, he, was, he put himself in the position to take the win he was in the top four early on absolutely and, he, was, uh, he wasn't the one getting involved in the accidents was he no and uh, th and therefore he, he collected the win uh, obviously and he wasn't the one who hit you the don't, wall you don't, win the purely by, you don't win purely by luck but uh, there was certainly some luck involved I would say absolutely but you make your own luck don't you you have to be there to take advantage of it 
and uh, it's thoroughly deserved because uh, drivers don't deserve to win the ti win the races if they hit the wall in the final turn when leading. And Paul Wood on pole position, Elio Lucchese alongside him, they would never have dreamt that in, in uh, a thousand years. No, they, uh, uh, Elio Lucchese has been there before. He was uh, in the top five. Alessio. Oh, Alessio. that was Alessio, wasn't it? Yes, so this of course, is. Yeah. This is Elio Lucchese's. So, <laughs> so Elio Lucchese on the front row. This is your big moment to shine, my son. <laughs> don't call him my son because I don't think you'll get that. He's Italian. Okay. He's Italian. Bene. Vr and, and Kaido on the road road two. Of course, NATO and Vr are still pretty close together now, and Tolbock and Barrick. So we'll see those top four again. I'm pretty sure contesting for the win. Will Van Dorn stay out of trouble this time? I will tell. Who are we waiting for to join the, join the track? I'm not quite sure who that is. Who are we waiting for? We're going to have a formation lap here once again, so if you need to just grab a quick drink, um, please rush and do so. We'll have to be very quick because they're leaving the grid now. They are leaving the grid now. They're on a minute and a half time, they'll be racing. Yeah, I woke up my sister, it's 20 past 3 in the morning, and she's a couple of rooms away, but I shouted so loud. I think I, uh, I think I probably woke up the whole of my university block actually, because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't, I, I was on push to talk and I sort of forgot I was on push to talk. I was screaming my head off. <laughs> and Richard Blaine in tenth, in finish ninth in that, in that uh, first race. Uh, continuously good, good run of strong results, isn't it, Tom? Because he got a ninth and a sixth at Nurburgring, and then ninth here again. So after a sticky start to the season, he's uh, progressed extremely well. He's, he's getting, he's getting himself uh, back in the results, isn't he? Certainly. And uh, he'll, be, he'll be happy with where he is right now. I wonder what Paul Wood is thinking at the head of this field. I think he'd be scared. I'd be scared at the head of that field. I would frankly. be scared. Considering, oh, I would be, considering what happened in race one. As I say, I, I, I would be scared. Yeah, I was agreeing. Oh, sorry, I just said wouldn't. And but Graham's, yeah. Graham's now back in 20 seconds, so um, the, the, despite crashing further along the track, the game hasn't put him in 18th. It's put Amaral in where apparently he finished, so... Clearly the game couldn't make up his mind who to give what position, of course, what was going in the point, because it didn't con con um, complete 75% of the race distance, which which could, of course, have implications for those who come up to server 2, uh, uh, to, from server 2, should I say, and now we are at the head of the field here, coming round the final turn, there's Paul Wood, in the striking yellow and, well, golden green, used to say earlier, but it was more yellow than gold, golden green colours of Australia, Got the default ATCC skin there for the Casey. We are, of course, a familiar red and green. Kaido in blue. Van Dorn in his Belgian colours. And we come to the line now and we start the second race. Paul Wood leads the field away. And it looks like a good start there from Van Dorn once again. And VR. And immediately they're, they're harrying. Immediately they're harrying Paul Wood down into turn one. And Paul Wood's left himself out, out to dry already. He's on, on doing there, really. And VR takes the lead of the race. And Van Dorn is pushing Francisco VR. I wonder if Van Dorn's trying to get a gap on the field already because they've got, now got Paul Wood in between them. And Kaido trying to come down the inside of those. And Nato pushing him. So we've got VR, Van Dorn, Kaido and Nato pushing their way towards the front of the field. But Paul Wood now in third. We've got Tolborg ahead of Keith Barrick somehow. Not quite sure how that's happened, but it's happened. But they're now line of stern and they will, they will now start to work together. Not as far as a lap, an uh, opening lap as in the opening race. But full of intrigue nonetheless. Barrick will have let Talbot through because Barrick has been pushing Talbot around. Uh, if you remember, I was saying that from their practice session. So uh, obviously Barrick using that as a tactic, getting straight in behind his teammate and pushing him around, making sure they're stuck together from the get-go. And uh, you can see that Paul Wood is going to get left behind a little bit. We're looking at his teammate from the island, but uh, Paul Wood might get left by a little bit without drafting part of the front. Nobody's been lost off the back of the field. We've got. Uh <laughs> the two FDR cars once again, a, bit, a little bit lonely at the back of the field, they've been doing that quite a lot in this race, in these couple of races, but Van Dorn and VR lead the way, I love that name, Stoffel Van Dorn, rolls off the tongue very well indeed, but Paul well still in third. Good well we've seen Van Dorn in uh, F1 in real life, in the future he's doing the uh, World 2s by Renault 3.5s and he's set the fastest lap here as well. 5.8, so, 1, 1. Well, Van Dorn is, is tested in 3.5. He's actually yeah, in the yeah. uh, in the um, the, the uh, Formula Renault 2.0 series. It'll be his second season this season. So, look forward to see how he does. Oh, there's contact already. Oh, how did they not crash? I can hear huge gaps there for Kaido and Torbo. Kaido just chopped off Torbo. You can't give that a 
ability around the race, no matter whether whether you feel that Budapest's got a good overlap or not, because there's so long, so much of the race to go. And now they've been mugged. And Gary Lennon's out of the race again. He's out. Oh, Kayado! Kayado has run right up to the wall. And he is going to lose lots of positions. Torbox now in seventh. He's lost. He's lost Barrick, of course. And Dawn Fassel's up again, 45.636. He's pushing VR at the front of the field. And now it's it's left between Barrick and NATO to push each other. Oh, oh God, God. Who's that? It's Amaral! Amaral! Like, oh, Carver drops right the side of him. Amaral's involved in an accident again! What on earth is going on here today? I've never seen so many accidents on the racetrack, even at this particular place. I know how difficult it can be, but still, guys! What are you doing to yourselves? Since the car as well has dropped all the way back through the field. Yeah, that's right at the back. I don't know what happened him. He was crowd favourite, Vincent Kahn. He seems to get all the luck, and it's all bad, as Murray would say. He must have been... He must have been with Kayado actually, that must have been the same incident. Amaral. He was right, uh, Amaral, sorry, because they were right at the front. NATO, NATO fast as that. He's being pushed by Barrick though. He's being pushed by Barrick. By, 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 by Barrick. <laughs> and, Barrick. Uh, by Barrick. I've got, I never thought of it like that. By Barrick. I'm not going to say that all the whole time now. And Van Dorn of VR. 1.5 second gap already on NATO. Van Dorn was very clever at the start of the race. He immediately got in behind VR. Recognised that Paul Wood might be a bit of a cork in the bottle and might upset the rhythm of the other guys behind and pushed Van, uh, VR to the front of the field. I thought that was very intelligent there from Van Dorn. Whether he actually meant to do that or it was just a, a bit of luck, I think that was very intelligent. It was. He selected the right drafting partner out of the two and uh, Wood's going to get mugged here by NATO and Barrett because uh, I don't think Wood's uh, going to pick up a drafting partner out of those He's two. But, but Paul's looking all the incidents back, isn't he? Because he hasn't got the, the pure pace of the rest of the field but all the field is tripping over each other and handing him, you know, this top five spot at the moment. And he'll spot him behind, get the draft, follow them round, or he, or, or he won't actually because he's gone too narrow and now understood and lost the draft already. So that shows <laughs> how quickly you can actually lose speed here. He's I off do the back of the back of them already. I do like how Barrick and NATO have teamed up just from pure chance, even though they're bitter rivals in the championship. They've just got to just to keep in reasonable touch with the two leaders, who, by the way, are setting ridiculously good lap times. They've done a 45-5 this zone round, but they're they're putting those low 45s in lap after lap after lap. So, despite they having can... not practiced together, <laughs> they know 45-6 now. Obviously, yeah. Uh, so it's a two-second gap still. So they're not gaining on Van Dorn and, and VR. And these two just need to keep their heads and keep pushing them their, their way around. Van Dorn and VR are leading. Van Dorn's not going to make any silly moves. He's a very intelligent guy, despite the fact he's not so experienced in the ATCC. Very intelligent indeed. He's matured an awful lot over, over the past year through his FSR experience. And Pedro Amaral is way back in the field, of course, and is, as is Michael Carver. Both a lap down. No, not, not a lap down, sorry, but they will be pretty soon, I would say. Kayado at the back of the field also as well. Only got himself to blame for that, I'm afraid. Robert Isles also way back, so he's not be able to help his, his teammate Paul Wood. So something's happened to Robert Isles. He's had a big slide somewhere or something like that. The Casey and Gonsalves team up together, 17th and 18th. Trying to push their way back to the front of the field. Rhys Garner is very lonely. I'll tell you, he isn't lonely. Swiderski, Khan, Asbury, Braham and Barbosa. They're not lonely at all because they're in a five-car draft right now. Look at this. For 11th position. All moving around the track. It looks very dangerous indeed. No wonder we have such a big accident because I would not like to be part of this group. We're all going three wide into turn one. That's what it sounds like. Oh, Khan, it, Khan was loose then. Khan was loose as they headed into turn one. He just gathered that up. Oh, oh that was Swiderski taking a wide line around the outside. I thought they were going to uh, go straight in the wall. Almost hit the camera as it was. He must have tapped the wall there. Definitely not making that one stick. Almost came, came with too much speed out of turn one. And now... It's Lucchese, Van Scheppelen, here's Van Scheppelen, he's in ninth at the moment, he'll be very pleased with that indeed. Of course, all the drivers who got a poor result in race one need a good result in race two, else they're they in danger of dropping towards, dropping back into server two, especially if they're towards that end of the championship. There. Oh, Barbosa! Almost an accident, I'm sure it's going to be a big accident there, Khan and Barbosa involved. Barbosa came across the front of Khan and almost speared into the wall, but just about held it. Casey, Van Schepgen and Duarte Lopez. There we are in eighth position. Blaine and Torborg working together. Tor Torborg would have loved a stronger race here, but he's going to be struggling to get any better than fifth, I would say. Maybe he'll only get sixth. There's some 3.2 seconds behind Paul Wood. And NATO and Barrick are not gaining 
on Van Dorn and VR Tobe. The gap's the same, isn't it? It's give or take a ten. Fact and it's, uh, it's increasing. It's yeah, it's, it's increasing by about a tenth a lap, isn't it? Incredibly so consistent, Tobe. Sorry, you're wrong, but incredibly consistent. Forty five six. I was saying that, wasn't I? I was saying it's been low forty fives, low forty fives, then it was mid forty fives, now it's still mid forty fives. The tyres are obviously dropping off just by a couple of tenths, but uh, by now, but uh, the lap times are incredibly good, as you say. The problem is, five six. Watch this now. Next time how, round. How will they know when they're going to pit? Because they're not teammates. They won't be in the same TeamSpeak channel. They're going to have to use their lights. That's a very good, very good point. Very good point. Obviously, uh, maybe NATO will. Very good point. Point five five again. Look at that. This gap is two point four seconds now. Yeah, back to NATO. Tenth. It could be that NATO, could be that NATO or Barrick have a tiny bit of damage from somewhere. Uh, also, that might be playing a part. But uh, Van Dorn, obviously. Oh! Oh, oh VR into VR, the wall! VR has clipped the wall. I'm not quite sure what happened I'm there. I'm sure that's what happened in race one. Because he's clipped the wall, and it looked like there's lots of looked like there's lots of smoke on the inside, didn't it? Didn't it, Toby? On the inside of turn yeah. one, on the apron, that was that was maybe and Van, maybe he was pushed sideways. Well, Van, Van Dorn's, Dorn's going to be caught now. He's going to be caught, absolutely. Should um, I'm gonna say, no, don't pit because there's no much point. Either way, you're going to be uh, going to be stuck by yourself. But NATO Is and VR now together. I wonder if they'll just abandon Barrick. Well, I would if I was VR. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Keith, but you know that's two teammates. You know your drafting part. You know when they're when they're going to pit. And, and Barrick, Barrick is pushing NATO as hard as he can to make sure I know, yeah. <laughs> get up to the back of them. Not because he does the normal thing of wanting to stay ahead of somebody, but because he does not want VR to team up with NATO. Which is going to happen, I think. VR will be uh, a little bit a little bit anxious to uh, make sure that he does get onto the back of NATO because Barrick's been pushing NATO around for the whole of this race, only for personal gain, of course. I wonder if Van Dorn just pushed VR a little bit too hard. That's two incidents now has been involved with in, in two races. Well, you I, see, their I, I pace was very good. You can, you can pick up that just that extra tenth if you push people through the middle of the corners as well. You see all that at Daytona. It's been banned now, isn't it, of course? But in real life at Daytona 500, they're not allowed to push through the corners, are they, anymore? Uh, they can, as, uh, you know, they, they are allowed to, but it's, it's gets its dire consequences if you get it yeah. wrong. And uh, just rub on the wrong side of the, of the car, and it can be extremely... I think the right word. Disastrous, that's the that's right word. But Van Dorn has been involved in, in, in a couple of incidents there. Whether they are his fault or not, I'm not sure. But of course, as a rookie oval 80cc driver, you've got to suspect that, right? Yeah, you, you, it's got to be something that you've got to think about. Uh, Van Dorn, completely new to uh, 80cc in general, not just ovals, as you say. Uh, obviously, a last time last time out he won uh, both races in the Nürburgring, but this is a completely different kettle of the Ooh, kettle of NATO, fish. NATO, NATO, wiggle. wiggle. Why was that? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> was that just Barrick pushing him through, or I'm not quite sure what that was. It's was maybe that uh, there was a bit of a bit of a maybe it was just a bit of crossed wise there with Barrick on low and NATO was on low also. Barrick and Barrick has his lights on, which means he might be pitting. You know that Barrick likes to play a little bit of game. <laughs> he, he has to pit, I'm afraid. I'm not allowed to use the lights in that kind of manner. Oh, look, this is so so close. He's not pitting, it seems. He's supposed to pit right there, Keith. It's very naughty. Oh, NATO! NATO! Again! Again! Oh, Barrick it's pitting. Barrick is in. They're all in. They're all... Oh, oh, NATO slowed it down. Oh, he slowed it down just. And Wood, Torborg and Blader in is also... Oh, that Torborg spinning there wasn't quite spinning, so I couldn't quite see for the smoke. Van Dorn's carried on by himself. He's got... He got oh, it's on the grass! That's Asbury. Surely that's Asbury. That's Blaine! It's not playing, it's not playing, who is it? It must be Asbury, I can't quite see. It's Danny Asbury, Danny Asbury's in the middle of the grass and he stole the car as well, got going again. Into the pits he comes, he's going to be way down now. He was on for a strong result, he'd be very frustrated with himself. But Van Dorn needs to pit right now, doesn't he, doesn't he, Toby? Yeah, he needs to get in and make sure he comes out and somewhere near to someone. But this this solved the, um, the pitting issue that they were well, having in the in there. It was. Oh. That was beautiful, it looked like to me. It just slowed it down in time. Unbelievably quick. That looked like a perfect pit stop. It looked like he practiced that. I hope he hasn't got a drive through actually for that. It looked like he was slowly slowed down. Anyway, anyway look, Barrick look, look, looks look, look like he's got the though. jump. Barrick has got the jump on them. And, and that he needed to get the jump, didn't he? Because he's VR and NATO. 
And Nate's got a big gap to VR look. Mm, this so I wonder if VR and Barry work together now. Well, no. These two if have I was great respect for each other. Plenty, yeah, but there's plenty of time left. VR just needs to drop back a couple of seconds, get back with NATO, nah, and then the push their way up to Barry. The, the gap from VR to NATO is 2.2 seconds. That's all right. You can make up five or six tenths a lap. They've got 13 nah. laps left. VR NATO is also a, cha a championship rival, so I'm not sure what I would do to be honest. I don't just I'd drop back. How, it, how, how it would go. I'd rather have my teammate there than the, than a one on one fight. I'd rather have. Um, but, have but then do you do risk Van Dorn and Barrick teaming up? Well, let's see where Van Dorn comes out. There comes Barrick, so it looks like they're going to. Van Dorn. They, they could, you see, they could team up and then there's a two second gap which you never get back because they're just lapping at the same speed you are, so. Yeah. It's a tricky, this, this tricky, tricky decision. situation. Barrick is going to come right onto the back of Van Dorn here, isn't he? This is going to be perfect for Barrick. This is going to be two race wins if he's not careful. I mean, oh, if, he, if, he if he's not careful. <laughs> if he is yeah. careful. If he's got a point seven gap to Barrick. So Barrick gets on Van Dorn quickly. If Barrick gets on Van Dorn quickly, they can make a break. They really can make a break right here, right now. Barrick needs to get rid of his headlights. And he's, he's done so. So this yeah. Is yeah. Oh, this is crucial. This could be this could be the the, the the breakaway. This could be the breakaway because VR and VR's not close enough and NATO's 2.5 seconds back from VR. I wonder if NATO's got some damage because he's dropping further back from from well, those we saw, guys. We saw VR into the wall as as well. NATO. We, so. we saw both in the wall, didn't we? But we saw NATO in the wall just before the pit stop. Yeah, we did. So uh, I wonder if they both got damage. Anyway, this, this is it. anyway, this is, the this is this is it, isn't it? Uh, this is yeah. where this is where um. Van Dorn and uh, Barrett need to need to be really careful that they don't end up that Van Dorn doesn't end up in another incident because we think he's been in t at least two now. Absolutely, and of course, I think Barrett might want to stay behind Van Dorn. Doesn't want Van Dorn pushing him because it seems like uh, Van Dorn might get in trouble with him pushing sometimes. Of course, we don't know; we haven't seen. But um, the suspicion remains, of course, when you're a rookie driver at an oval track, that of course it's your fault. But two second gap now, two point five second gap now. Pulling away. It's all over for VR and NATO. All over. And VR and NATO need to team up immediately because Torborg and Wood are coming. And Blaine. Torborg and Wood are pushing each other along behind. quite quietly, haven't they? They have, they are. And Wood's get another top eight result here. Very, very solid indeed. People one second back from Blaine, but Wood and Torborg pushing each other. Wood's doing his darnest to help out a championship contender. And now Torborg is teaming up, it seems, with uh, Kaedo, perhaps. Will he just pass him? VR, it look seems at like VR and NATO. I told now, you, VR has dropped back with NATO, and they're going to push each late. other. It's too late. It's a little bit gap. Four yeah, but it's not too late seconds. to defend from Torborg and Wood, though, is it? That's true, that's true. They should be able to do that, but it's too late for the win. Yeah, well... They, they needed to do that immediately. I don't think... Yeah, you, you, did that, you? you did yeah, say that, didn't you? Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> Did indeed say, but of course, I, I was betting that the gap between VR and, and Barry was enough for, v, for VR to get the draft, but of course it wasn't. And um, there you have it, there's the results, because Barry and Van Dorn are now leading the field. Right now it's far less dramatic than you might think, but it's still anyone's race at the front, Barry or Van Dorn. We could be looking for, yeah. for Barry, you know, emphatically ending his, uh, his winless streak, because he could go for a double win here, back to back. And is he going to do to uh, is he going to do to Van Dorn what he tried to do to NATO going to turn one with one lap to go, or is he going to uh, hold back and wait for that final corner mistake? I don't think Van Dorn's capable of making a, a huge error like NATO did. Van Dorn looks a much smooth driver in that BMW, that's for sure. Was more experienced in it as well as you were saying earlier with VR. Perhaps that counts or something, but it didn't seem like it does because VR's the one who's been hitting the walls left, right, and centre. But here is NATO and VR. Let's watch the gap. It's 5.8 seconds. Uh, Barrick and Van Dorn don't look like they're pushing each other so much. Well, uh, they're, 40, they're doing 45 60s lap after lap, so. Yeah, well. Whatever they're doing, it's working. It's possible, right? it's possible to do low 45s, maybe even a 45 flat with a no. perfect push, so. Yeah, 45 9. Nine. That's what it's I mean. The they've still like they seconds, pushing though, look. Yeah, well, let's see, because they've only just started pushing each other. There's only 8 laps to go as well, so we would need NATO and VR to, to take almost a second lap out of them. Yeah, it was 45.9 to a 45 flat is about a second, so... At this stage of the race, though, I, I, would, I would very much doubt they could do a 45.9. Very much doubt indeed. Well, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. I'm just sort of playing devil's advocate a little bit. Um, oh, so and it's, it's now taken six lead. Oh, 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 hasn't taken the lead. He just uh, timing time screen. glitch. Um, yeah, it's just it's gone up. It's gone up. Who's going to take the lead now, though? Here we go. Going to try and box Van Dorn in with the traffic, it looks like. 
Andor's not having any of that though and kept a very tight line and kept the momentum around the outside of the corner rather than scrubbing on the inside it worked perfectly I don't know why you'd take the lead at this stage with seven laps to go P. unless he was I, hoping I, that oh, I think a little bit of twitch I think, try, trying to, I think he was trying to box him into the traffic perhaps well yeah and maybe get him caught up but because if, exactly if he gets a break because if he gets a break to the other driver then the, the other driver can't catch up because there's no no drafting partners around so almost uh, you know tete a tete then isn't it head to head Barrack and Tolbog. Uh, Barrack and Tolbog. Barrack and Van Dorm. Sorry, you used to say Barrack and Tolbog. Of course. They are always so close in their own track, but Tolbog's been having a sketchy couple of uh, events here. We could have been, of course, at, at the, uh, the Nurburgring, but then the second event was a poor result for him after he was very unhappy with the way Barrack worked with him to try and catch VR. And it ended up with Tolbog spinning at the Schumacher S's and finishing in a lowly position for him. This is at the head of the field. What's happening further back? Any further? Any big battles? Here's Blaine and Braham. Braham's coming over the cover. Up in ninth now. Push, pushing Blaine around track. Who can, can they catch Vincent Khan? Well, he's pushing Vincent Khan. Oh, he's pushing Khan, sorry. Yeah, can they catch Richard Blaine? That's what he meant. Yes. That was Vincent Khan. I should have known those yellow, yellow tinted windows. I apologise. And Lopez and Ben Shepman kind of working together. Bit of a gap there. Barbosa has Elio Lucchese for close company. Reese Gardner, has he got anybody helping him? He has got Swiderski helping him. So we've got lots of teams of two around the track at the moment. And Asbury. He's a lap down. A lap down. But he ha uh, well, I don't think he's actually a lap down, just the, the timing. Oh, it's the, time, the way the timing is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Hugo Gonzalez is with him. So lots of teams of two, it seems, all the way back through the field. No big gaggles of cars. Here's Isles and Lucchese. And Kaido doesn't have a positional rival around him, but he's pushing Torborg along. I'm not sure that Team Portugal will be very happy with Kaido pushing Torborg around. Well, no, he's, he's not. Because he's, he's pushing, he's kind of pushing Torborg towards NATO and VR. He's not anywhere near any well, result, is he? No. Exactly, so I, I would just... Look, like he's just pulled off now, as we said that. <laughs> I wonder if he's listen to the comments. I, I, I was just <laughs> going to say that. I wonder if he's got it on the second broadcast. On second, second screen. broadcast, second screen. Come if he has, hello. Face, hello, hello, Kayado. Glad to, glad to hear <laughs> that you're listening. Off, oh, yeah. I'm helping Oh, Barrick Barrick is in the lead now, by the way. He has taken the lead of the race, so we've got four laps to go. Has Van Dorn got, has Van Dorn got what it takes to, to uh, pass, though? Well, it's not. It's not. We're, we're not getting particularly excited about that because there was four laps and there's plenty of plenty areas of that you can that you can get by and plenty of time, as you say, as well. With uh, with four laps to go, it's just lean, lean back and enjoy this finale. You get a draft. You slip one up the inside into turn one. Toby, please don't ever say that again. Sorry. <laughs> that was. Uh... Jo jobs are good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Bronny likes it when you do that. And Van Dorn pushing drivers into turn one also again. VR came to grief earlier on. There's no need to push each other around now. There isn't any need, you just need to just get in behind each other as close as you want to be. Well, here comes Van Dorn down the inside. Yeah, this is a, let him go. It's, a it's a difficult place to make a pass, though, as you can see, because it's very much a one line corner. I've caught the guy on the outside and just keep the momentum all the way down the straight line. I wonder if Van Dorn's just trying to, because he's obviously he's never actually tried to properly overtake anybody yet for, for, for a win, for, an, for a proper. Um, overtake and get ahead and, and, and take you know take the win kind of thing. So I wonder if he's just trying to test out certain positions where he's stronger and where which particular run works. So he's trying another one here and he's trying to go tight through there, and it just uh, the car just was a little bit tight and just wouldn't wouldn't turn properly for him. It was a little bit understeery, so he's going to have to have another go. He's only got two laps to figure out a way of getting back past Keith, but he's Absolutely. got the slipstream, hasn't he? He has, of course, he doesn't want to throw away his second place either. Well, no, but... That's important in championship points. If you're yeah. a racer, you want to take the win. Of so course. You don't, you don't think about championships. And it's extremely close, they cross the line, the tenth between them. An ultimate lap. Van Dorn and Barrick. Van Dorn goes one way, then the other. He's going to try and go down the end, inside into turn one, this time around. Oh, he's going to understeer and scrub up into the side of Barrick there. And they're side by side as they go through turn one. Looks like Van Dorn is quite on the edge here, and Barrick is looking quite cautious 
around him. Looking back now for Van Dorn at Keith Berwick. Around the final corner of the penultimate lap. Just four corners to go. This Van Dorn is leading. Opportunity. Look, he's got a little bit of a gap. He's now in the stream. He can and pull out. Is Van Dorn going to protect the inside? He is. Van Dorn's going to protect the inside. Around the final corner, which is going across the start finish line. And he's holding the inside. He's cleverly held the inside and held Barrick out on the outside line. Now Barrick's going to try and do the cutback. The cutback's still working the ovals, of course. And Barrick squeezing right in behind. He's going to get the draft. He's going to get the run. Van Dorn's trying to squeeze down. He's going to close. Van Dorn's squeezing him towards the line. He's just about giving the car's width. That was just... Perfect defending there from Van Dorn, I've got it's to say. It's not flat out though, the final corner's not flat out. Van Dorn's gone very tight. If Barrick's sensible, he'll get the draft out of the corner. But Barrick's missed the apex look. He has, but this is where he made his move last time. Will he get enough of a draft this time around? I don't think he will. I think Van Dorn's going to take his second ATCC victory of the season. He does! Van Dorn wins the second race here at KW Super Speedway. Keith Barrick finishes in second position at one a first and a second place for Keith Barrick he'll be very pleased with that we've got plenty of drivers crossing the line now as VR crosses the line ahead of NATO that's quite telling that I think I wonder if NATO decided to let VR win because he's just in a stronger place in the championship at the moment anyway fifth place for Jesper Tolby he'll be pretty pleased with that considering how lost he got in the opening laps very scrappy there in the middle of the field from lots of drivers sixth place Paul Wood it was very the first race everyone seemed to team together and was doing very well together and then they had the big accident, of course. In the second race, they just seemed to not team up at all. But seventh there was place no big Duarte... accident as a result. <laughs> seventh place, Duarte Lopez. Eighth place, Michael Van Scheffen. Ninth, Richard Blaine, of course. Uh, tenth was Yuri Braham in the end. Eleventh uh, was Hugo Barbosa. Twelfth, Elio Lucchese. Thirteenth, Swiderski. Fourteenth, Reese Gardner. Fifteenth, Danny Asbury. Sixteenth place, Vincent Kahn. It's a miserable, miserable season so far for Vincent Kahn. He's shown... Plenty of speed, plenty of potential, but he's been so unlucky. Crowd favourite, of course. 17th place, Hugo Gonzalez. 18th, Robert Isles. 19th, Alessio Lucchese. 20th, Michael Carver. Uh, 20th, Andrew Carlo, sorry. 21st, Michael Carver. 22nd, Pedro Amaral. And he is the last of the drivers who are still in the server. Of course, Gary Lennon left the game early on after crashing, well, DNFing earlier on in the race. And we're going to be joined by the drivers here in a second. We'll quickly sum up that race for us, Toby, just ahead of the driver interviews? Uh, it was a little bit... Uh, I, I can't use the word dull, because it was still fairly exciting, but... It was, uh, compared to the first event. Compared to the first race, which was insane, uh, the second race was a little bit more calm. Everyone was a little bit more calm and collected. There was uh, much less strategy going on. I think it was more of a free-for-all in the midfield. And you, obviously at the end, you saw Barrick and Van Dorn having their their epic battle for the win and uh, turns out that Barrick just couldn't quite find a way past Van Dorn towards the end of the race but it's still excellent from uh, from Barrick to get a first and a second and uh, I'm sure he'll be pleased with that and we are joined by Keith Barrick now uh, hello, Ryan. Keith your first <laughs> ATCC win in over a year <laughs> how does it feel dude oh uh, um well it was oh it feels incredible I mean I was literally shaking going to the grid I still am after that, um, it's been a long time, and I know races wins are needed to take the championship. And um, it was—I I mean, it couldn't have got any closer to the to the end. Um, oh yeah, I feel amazing that I got the first win, though. First and the second, I mean, what was going through your mind? Because we, we saw in the first race, in the final few laps, it seemed whoever got into turn one ahead was going to win the race. It seemed like that was going to be the place to make the move. Then NATO, yeah. of course, screwed up in the final corner. What was going through your head at that point? Well, actually, what what had happened was is I uh, when I okay obviously there's a lot more to the first race because the strategy with Jesper, um, you know, just there's a lot of things that led up to the final laps. But I, I realized that when it was Miguel and I, um, and we it was just the two of us for the race win, I, I could kind of <clears throat> excuse me, I could kind of tell that my car had, had taken damage, and I know I hit the wall earlier, and I was losing the speed needed to make the draft up, pull over, and pass down the straightaway. So I knew I, I wasn't going to do it that way. And I kept thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? So I kept attempting little passes here and there. And I realized that I could, if I could dive late enough into the last corner, I might be able to get alongside. And the way I actually – I don't know if this was caught on the, on the broadcast, uh, but when I went, in, I went inside of him very late in the last corner, 
a light, very light touch to his to his left rear. He got a little loose, but I almost, I literally almost lost it. I had to go down into fourth, which you don't do in the last corner. And I guess Miguel had got really loose, and when he overcorrected, he got he shot up towards the wall. And when he hit the wall, he lost all his momentum, and I was able to get out of the slide just enough to come up to his bumper and I'm, I'm I'm faking left faking right faking left and then finally deciding right and I was able to just get it at the line and I mean I it could I, I don't know how close it was it might be the closest race in in ATCC history I'm pretty sure and uh we just lost Ryan <laughs> it certainly was a very close race though for you Keith and yeah uh, thank you and uh well done for race one and you must yeah. be pleased with getting second in race two as well Oh, well, race two kind of was a, a little bit of a little bit different um, overall because uh, the the strategy worked out at the start with with Jesper, but he kind of got held up and then the lead group had kind of sailed off and Jesper was behind. It, it sucks because I wasn't able to work with Jesper. However, I had to. You got to work with what your situation and uh, I had to make really good friends with uh, Team Portugal and uh, work with Miguel right after we just finished going uh, like heavyweight bout to the line. Um, Miguel was close to me and uh, he made a pass uh, fairly early as we were trying to chase down Stoffel and uh, we were chasing down Stoffel and Francisco and I fig- I could see their lap times and our pace was fairly good so I figured if I push Miguel hard enough and my car was set up to push that was the whole thing with Jesper I figured if I pushed him f- leading up to the pit stops we could catch them and it, we were slowly reeling him in. Then Miguel made a small mistake, and we lost most of the progress we had made. But then I, I just see Francisco up in the distance get, uh, I think, maybe clip the apex uh, or the, the back, uh, apron. I'm not 100% sure, but um, it l- led us to – we ended up past Vilar because his pace was – he was just a little bit slower because of the damage he took, and then we started to reel in Stoffel. I noticed – uh, Francisco say he was pitting, and I knew that Miguel was going to follow. So I figured, all right, I got to go in with these guys. I don't want to be out there alone. Did with them. I managed to get a, an amazing run in, and I actually gapped both of them, and was able to get the the gap away from them. Came out perfectly timed. It ended up on Stoffel's bumper. But uh, I just, I, I think I over over pushed the car at the start of the race which led me to not have uh, much of a car left at the end of the race to make the move back on Stoffel. I was just kind of toying back and forth, make a small pass, make uh, make a small pass, kind of see where he's feeling it. But he managed to defend perfectly, which is uh, it's, it's a hard thing to do here. And Stoffel pulled off a great race to win. Uh, I just I wish I could have taken the double here. It would have really, really um, given me a, a nice jump start into the second half of this season. It certainly would have done. And uh, the person who took the race two really from you was Stoffel Van Dorn, and uh, that backs up your two race wins at the Nurburgring. You must be happy with that on your uh, oval debut in the in the ATCC, Stoffel. Yeah, race one didn't went so well for me. Uh, Vincent, he well first uh, I lost the contact with the front group, so uh, wasn't really wasn't really good. And then I tried to make friends with Vincent. But he made a mistake in the last corner and touched the the lower part of the oval. So I, I couldn't. He started to spin and I couldn't avoid him. So that that caused a really a big crash. Yeah, uh, we saw we saw the huge crash with uh, with Vincent Kahn and it, it caused about six drivers, I think, to uh, to end the race. Uh, did you survive without without getting much damage from that? Well, I got a little suspension damage, but I yeah I could quite manage to 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 go directly to the pit because the the yeah. I didn't have any speed anymore, so race one was a little bit to forget. I still managed to finish fourth, which, which was important to to get a good starting position for race two. Which you then used to uh, take the win. Yeah, of course, wasn't uh, wasn't easy with uh, Keith. We had a great battle in mm, the end. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, first I I drove away a little with uh, Francesco, which uh, which did a great job also. Uh, just we lost a big contact when when uh, I don't know who it was. I think it was Pedro Amaral or something. He came out of the pit lane and pinned just in front of us. So that that shocked us a little bit, and that's where uh, Francisco lost the contact. So suddenly I was alone in front, and yeah, then I I just had to wait until somebody came up to me. Um, so uh, which it turned out to be Keith in the end. So uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and you, you two had a, you two had a big head-to-head at the end of that race. Um, 
but congratulations on the race too, uh, Stoffel. That's uh, an excellent result for you, backing up your noble green result. Well done, Stoffel. Thank you very much. Well done. And uh, a driver who was involved in a, a couple of incidents in that race, Toby, wasn't he? Francisco Villar. Not the, uh, the smoothest uh, night for you, Francisco. Yeah, no, not for sure. I, I don't know. Uh, seems like everyone wants to hit me this season. Uh, <laughs> first round was Lauritsen, second, uh, third round was Yuri, and now it was Je Jesper. Jesper tapped the back of my car uh, in a very dangerous uh, place, and I just spun, spun, and I, not just spun. I, I rolled, and I, I did everything I could. Um, I don't know how, how I was able to continue the race, but fortunately I was. Uh, but my top speed was something like 240, which is ridiculous in this track. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the end, I, I was quite lucky to to get to a sixth place. Um, in the second race, the second race, uh, everything was going smooth until the poor Pedro uh, spun at the exit uh, of the pits. Uh, he's so sorry right now, but yeah, this, <laughs> these things happen, uh, and I. I had to to turn to 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 avoid him, and I had again a suspension problem, and my race was ruined, ruined again. Well, unlucky, Francisco. Of course, you've been very strong this season so far, but um, of course there are drops in this season. You do drop your two yeah. worst results throughout the season, so uh, all is not lost. And uh, I'm sure you will bounce back at uh, Laguna Seca in a couple of weeks' time, which is very much a BMW track. Um, also, a Honda uh, track as well. Agree with that one. <laughs> You can't agree with that one. <laughs> no, no. Well, really, Lawrence really, last, really Lawrence last year was extremely quick, as quick as Torborg was yeah. in server one. So, and Lawrence yeah, will, will be back for that. But he'll right. be in server two again, of course. Yep. But uh, good luck for that and uh, unfortunate events. The last couple of races for you seems to be a bit of a magnet on the back of your car at the moment. Maybe you need a new paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan. No problem. And uh, we move on to uh, Mr. Nato, uh, who uh, took a second place. And a fourth, and uh, so the exact same result as Nurburgring actually. You took a second and a fourth there, and the difference was here, Nato, that you could have won the first race. Uh, yeah, I could, I could have won uh, the first race um, in the final with a uh, with a battle with with Kit for the for the win. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the the race was uh, was very good for me. The the first uh, the first part of the race with with, with Francesco. Um, was perfect, uh, leading the the race, pitting in the in the right uh, in the right lap, mm -hmm. and um, when the, when we exit um, the pits, uh, we are back to the um, third and fourth behind Jasper and and Kit. Yeah, and um, and uh, unfortunately, for, uh, I lose my <laughs> my teammate in the middle of the race. Yes. And uh, the strategy goes down, and uh, and and ben, the battle with Kit in the final was uh, was very good, and uh, in the last uh, in the last corner I I I don't uh, I don't push uh, push my car to to inside because uh, I saw that uh, I think that uh, <laughs> that that Kit uh, is not enough to close to me to 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 pass. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, it it touched me with a a little touch. We break me to the wall and and lose the all the all the all the speed. And it was uh, with Kit said it was uh, very very tight in the in the finish line. You, you, could, you could say it was a barbaric move then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was fun. Right? <laughs> you stole my joke. <laughs> I did. Sorry, Toby. And then. Um, in, in the second race, Miguel, talk us through through what happened there, because you you, you you teamed up in, with, with good Keith again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, with Keith again, with uh, pursuit uh, Francisco and and Stoffel. Um, I commit to one or two errors in the in the, in that laps, uh, and when when we when Francisco came down with uh, in the in the race, uh, we pitted. Uh, and, uh, yeah, tell and us I, what happened yeah. in that pit stop because you hit the wall just before the pits and you yeah, came out. Yeah, I came out uh, with the, I came out the, with the pit and um, I, was, I think I think you know, I was in fourth gear uh, and I was in third gear and um, in the middle of the corner of exit the pit uh, I pushed uh, second gear and ah. almost and almost uh, I I went there <laughs> in my race all, almost finished there. 
and uh, I lose I lose the contact with Francisco uh, mm-hmm. and uh, actually in the in the 20 laps uh, he he slowed down uh, for me he, yeah and came down to to the finish line with third and uh, and the fourth place of course you had to, to fend off Jasper but um congratulations to uh to Keith and to Stoffel for your wins here and uh, it's, it's some Thank great you. racing we saw a Thanks. A ridiculously big accident in the uh, in the first race, an accident quite like I've never seen before in my life, and uh, better than season season there too, Keith. And, yes. Um, so uh, thank you to you to you guys for entertaining us, and thanks to uh, to the viewers for watching. Thank you for Toby for uh, co-commentating with me. No of problem, course, Ryan. It's always been a it's been a pleasure as always. Yeah, it's great to be up at uh, four o'clock in the morning. We do enjoy it, even though we are very tired. But it's great to watch, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. And uh, of course, the the next World to re- the next the next TPS broadcast is on Wednesday, and uh, Mr. Davis is going to be going for the World Touring Masters Championship. You confident, Toby? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that good enough? <laughs> Why not, Toby? It's Bathurst, and what happens at Bathurst is I go there, and I seem to be relatively quick, and I think I'm doing very well, and then I forget what I'm doing, and I crash. I'm crashing the S's. Correct. You've got to do the S's 35 times. Don't remind me. I think it's 35 anyway. Either way, we have to do the S's quite a few times. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing whether Toby can uh, hold his nerve, take the win, or whether Toby will steal the championship from Toby. Toby's led the season all the way through, so we're uh, looking forward to that. Of course, and then after that, Wednesday after, we've got Cleo's round two, and uh, we've got uh, Keith and Danny. Commentating that once again after the uh, fraught action at Poznan GP at the first race, we're going to the Autumn Ring, which drivers who have driven, um, drivers who have, drivers who have driven, people who have played um, oh, Gran Turismo will have uh, will have will recognise that name, Autumn Ring. And then after that, of course, in two weeks' time from now, we have Laguna Seca, which is the fifth round of the American Touring Car Championship season four. So Wednesday is your next broadcast from the Touring Pro Series. For now, I bid you all goodbye, and thanks to the drivers for entertaining us. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for Toby for um, joining me and commentating with me again and um, see you all on Wednesday. See you. Bye, Miguel. Vamos lá para cima aqui. Vamos embora. See you guys.